Hello students. Today we are going to discuss about air pollution monitoring part 2 which includes analysis. In the part 1 of the presentation we have seen that air pollution monitoring mainly includes sampling and analysis of the pollutants. And in the first part we have discussed about the various methods of sampling of the air pollutants in the ambient air as well as in stack gas. So in this presentation, we will be mainly dealing with the analysis of the various pollutants. We all know that whether it is ambient air or whether it is stag gas, it consists of various types of pollutants like sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, nitric oxide, hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, etc. So we will see what are the different methods of analysis of these pollutants. So once a representative sample from the ambient air or from the stag gas is obtained, it has to be analyzed to find out what type of pollutant is present in it. To find out the presence of sulfur dioxide in ambient air, the following methods are used. That is colorimetric procedure, that is West Weeks method, bromocoulometric analyzer, conductometric method, flame photometric analyzer. And for stag gas, electrochemical method is used. Some of the methods that are used for ambient air measurement can also be used for stag gas measurement. For the analysis of NOx like nitrogen dioxide or nitric oxide, methods like colorimetric method, Gray-Salzman method, or chemiluminescent technique can be used. For the analysis of carbon monoxide in ambient air, non-dispersive infrared spectrophotometry that is NDIR method, electrochemical analysis, UV mercury replacement method, caloric metric method, etc. can be used. For the analysis of hydrocarbon, flame ionization detector is most commonly used. There are many other methods also which are used for the analysis of these air pollutants but here we will be mainly discussing about these methods. So let us start with the analysis method of sulfur dioxide. The first method is colorimetric procedure or West Gake method. In this method, sulfur dioxide from a measured quantity of air is absorbed in a solution of sodium tetrachloromercurate to form a stable and non-volatile dichlorosulfitomercuric complex. This is then reacted with formaldehyde and bleached para rosa aniline, which would yield a magenta colored para rosa aniline sulfonic acid product. The color intensity of this acid which can be detected by photometric method is proportional to the concentration of sulfur dioxide present in it. Next method of analysis of sulfur dioxide is bromocoulometric analyzer. In this analyzer, air containing sulfur dioxide is drawn continuously through an electrolytic cell which contains acidified bromine solution and two sets of electrodes as it is shown in the figure. As you can see, the two sets of electrodes means one is a combination of reference indicator electrode and another one is a combination of auxiliary generator electrode. The reference indicator electrode is used to detect the bromine concentration while the other set of electrodes that is the auxiliary generated electrode is used to generate any bromine necessary to maintain the proper balance. When sulfur dioxide is present in the air sample, it is oxidized by the bromine causing a reduction in the bromine concentration according to the reaction 2H2O plus SO2 plus Br2 gives SO4 2 minus plus 2 Br minus plus 4H plus. The reduction in bromine concentration changes the oxidation reduction potential of the reagent. A voltage is developed 
between the indicator electrode and the reference electrode and this voltage is compared to a reference voltage. The difference between the two voltages is then sensed by the other electrode system that is the generated auxiliary system causing an electric current to flow between them and generating sufficient bromin to maintain the original concentration according to the reaction 2 Br minus gives Br2 plus 2 electrons. This current flow necessary to maintain the proper balance is a measure of the sulfur dioxide concentration in the air stream. The next method used for the analysis of sulfur dioxide is conductometric method. In the conductometric method, the sampled air containing sulfur dioxide is passed through a dilute solution of hydrogen peroxide in dilute sulfuric acid. The SO2 is oxidized to H2SO4, thereby increasing the electrical conductivity of the solution. The increase in the conductivity, which is measured, is proportional to the concentration of sulfur dioxide in the sample. With this technique, as low SO2 concentrations as 0.01 ppm can be detected. However, this method suffers from wide variety of interferences due to other gases which can give error. Next method of analysis of sulfur dioxide is flame photometric analyzer. The flame photometric analyzer operates on the principle that when an air sample containing sulfur is ignited in a hydrogen rich flame, a characteristic flame emission spectrum is produced with a band centered around 390 micrometer. As you can see from the figure, the hydrogen rich flame is formed by supplying hydrogen from the bottom and the air sample burns in the hydrogen flame. The wavelength is monitored by a narrow band pass filter and photomultiplier tube. That is, you can see there is an optical filter and the photomultiplier tube. And the amount of light emitted is proportional to the concentration of sulfur within the flame. The device measures the total sulfur content in this air sample and is not specific to sulfur dioxide. But if we have to find the actual concentration of sulfur dioxide, it can be done by providing a selective filter or by the use of a gas chromatographic separation column. So this instrument is very sensitive to the total sulfur content as low as 0 0.01 ppm. Next method of analysis of sulfur dioxide in stack gases, electrochemical method. In this method, the SO2 gas is made to diffuse through a semi permeable membrane and a thin electrolyte layer. The sulfur dioxide gets adsorbed at the sensing electrode where the electrochemical reaction takes place, and the current generated is proportional to the concentration of sulfur dioxide. Next, Let's see the methods of analysis of NOx. NOx means it mainly includes nitrogen dioxide, nitric oxide, etc. The first method we are going to discuss is colorimetric method or Gray-Salzmann method. This method is based on the reaction of NO2 with sulfur analic acid to form diazonium salt. The diazonium salt is then coupled with n one naphthyl ethylene diamine dihydrochloride to get a pink colored dye complex. The color development is complete within 15 minutes at room temperature. After the color is developed, the amount absorbed is measured in a spectrophotometer at 550 nanometer. Although this method is specific to nitrogen dioxide, it can also be used for 
the analysis of nitric oxide by converting the nitric oxide to nitrogen dioxide by passing through a potassium permanganate solution. Next method is the analysis of nitric oxide using chemiluminescent analyzer. In this technique, the nitric oxide reacts rapidly with ozone to form nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. The ozone is produced by an ozonator and in this method about 7% of the nitrogen dioxide that is produced by this reaction is in the excited state and as it reverts back to the ground state it emits radiant energy. The emitted radiation is received by the photomultiplier tube which is indicated as PMT whose output is amplified and fed to a recorder. The intensity of the radiation is proportional to the amount of nitric oxide. The chemiluminescence reaction with ozone is specific for nitric oxide and if there is any presence of nitrogen dioxide in the sample, it has to be converted into nitric oxide before the gas enters the reaction chamber. The thermal converter as you can see in the figure is made of stainless steel coil and the nitrogen dioxide content of the sample is converted into nitric oxide. As I have already mentioned, the nitric oxide reacts with the ozone to form nitrogen dioxide in the excited state and oxygen. The nitrogen dioxide in the excited state is converted or it comes back to the ground state and emits radiation and which is received by the photomultiplier tube and is amplified and fed to the recorder and the intensity of the radiation is proportional to the amount of nitric oxide. Next method is the analysis of carbon monoxide using non-dispersive infrared analyzer or NDIR analyzer. This is a standard method for measuring the atmospheric carbon monoxide levels. This method allows continuous analysis based on the capacity of carbon monoxide to absorb infrared radiation. It mainly consists of two cells that is a sample cell and a reference cell, two infrared sources and a detector as shown in the figure. The reference cell is filled with a non-absorbing gas such as nitrogen and the sample cell is continuously flushed with the sample containing carbon monoxide which absorbs the radiation that is the IR radiation. The detector consists of two compartments which is separated by a thin metal diaphragm and is filled with carbon monoxide. During the operation, a optical chopper alternatively exposes the reference and the sample cell to the infrared sources. The reference cell passes almost all the infrared radiation onto one compartment of the detector cell while a varying am amount of infrared energy which is inversely proportional to the concentration of carbon monoxide in the sample cell reaches the other detector compartment. Since more radiation enters the reference cells, side of the detector compartment, the carbon monoxide contained inside the detector cell expands causing a pressure difference across the diaphragm which in turn causes the diaphragm to pulse back and forth in phase with the chopper action. The magnitude of the diaphragm distension is a function of the absorbing carbon monoxide concentration in the sample cell. The mechanical movement of the diaphragm is converted into electrical signal which can be amplified and then recorded. Next method of analysis of carbon monoxide is electrochemical analyzer. In this analysis, the gas sample containing the carbon monoxide is passed over a hot 
iodine pentoxide at 150 degree celsius when iodine gas is liberated as you can see from the reaction 5co plus i2o5 gets 5co2 plus i2 the li liberated iodine is absorbed by an electrolyte and it is reduced at the cathode of an amperometric cell by the following reaction that is i2 plus 2 electrons gives 2i minus the current produced is a quantitative measure of the carbon monoxide content of the sample next is the method of analysis of ozone using colorimetric method in this method a sample of air at a known flow rate is passed through a solution of 1% neutral buffered potassium iodide and iodine gas is liberated that is 2ki plus ozone plus h2o gives o2 plus 2koh plus i2 the liberated iodine is then measured colorimetrically usually at a wavelength of 352 nanometer since one mole of oxygen releases one mole of iodine the iodine concentration measured is directly related to the total oxygen concentration next method is the analysis of hydrocarbons using flame ionization detector in this method the sample gas is injected into the flame created by burning hydrogen in either air or oxygen when hydrogen alone burns relatively few ions are generated but when hydrocarbons are present the flame produces a complex ionization in which a large number of ions are present an electric field is set up in the vicinity of the flame by making the burner jet positive with respect to a wire loop the electric field induces ion migration in such a manner that a small ionization current is established between the electrodes and this current is proportional to the concentration of ions in the flame the current is amplified and it is displayed on the output meter since the response of the detector is approximately proportional to the number of carbon atoms present in the hydrocarbon being consumed in the flame the data are usually expressed in the units of the gas used in calibration that is ppm of carbon as methane so that's all about the various methods of analysis of gases like sulfur dioxide carbon monoxide and no egg hydrocarbons ozone etc thank you